Hi there folks, my name is Gabriel Seltzer, I'm from Dice3D, Brandeis University's 3D Printing Club. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how to make the switch from MakerBot to Simplify 3D. So if you've learned to love MakerBot and know where all the settings are that you know how to tweak and get the best results from your prints, I can show you exactly where those are in Simplify 3D. So I've got them both up on the screen, and of course, as you know, to import a file, you go to Add File, and double click on it, and it'll give you the Dropbox folder here that says how to... Uh, move it to the platform, um, and I'll just do that to make sure my print has no problem with it. To do that in Maker, in uh, Simplify 3D, all you have to do is your models are displayed right here, everything you've imported. So I click Import and double click on my object again. I'll use a model that I've actually created, uh, designed by uh, Valve for Dota 2, but I pulled the, uh, the game files myself and put on Thingiverse. Um, so now it's on the build plate. There's no option to move it to the build plate. Simplify 3D will do that automatically for you. Moving right along to move the view around, as you know, when MakerBot is left mouse button, or sorry, right mouse button to pan, middle mouse uh, to rotate, middle mouse button to pan. In Simplify 3D, it's a little bit different. Le left mouse button will actually rotate, and right mouse button will pan. Middle mouse will reset your view back to the default. Um, so that may take a little bit of getting used to, but it's not so bad in the long run. Uh, as you know, in MakerBot, to translate your print around, you go to the side thing and click around to move your print, and you can recenter it here. To do that in Simplify, you either double click on your model right up here, or double click on your model itself, and it'll bring up the model settings view. And this will have a lot of the commands that you're used to for MakerBot all in one place. So you can actually click on the absolute positioning and move your model a little bit to the left or to the right here. Um, or you can um, type in values, if I want to type in say 10, something like that, all those good things, and then you say save. You can also hold the control button and left mouse to drag around as you might be used to for MakerBot and put parts where exactly where you want them to be. Um, as far as rotating in MakerBot, as you know, you've got these rotate buttons from the things on the side here. Uh, same thing for Simplify 3D, everything's in the model settings right here, so I can change the rotations right here and rotate my model around. Um, not too different. And as in MakerBot, where the scaling options are right here, um, you can do that also in Simplify 3D. As of right now, there's no maximum size button in Simplify 3D, um, though it will ask you for small objects to convert them to millimeters to inches and such. Um, so that's pretty nice. And the uniform scaling button is right here. So that's all pretty straightforward. It'll tell you exactly where your print is centered or where it's placed on your a build plate and how big it is right here. Though you need to save and reopen this to have those values update. Um, and there's no way to resize a model with these numbers um, like there is in MakerBot just yet, but I'm sure that will happen in a future update. Now let's get into the nitty gritty bits of actually 3D printing your parts. In MakerBot, as you know, you go to settings and you adjust these things how you like. Um, this is one of the more intimidating parts of Simplify 3D. All settings are put in these processes. Um, you can that way you can have multiple dual extrusion prints, have multiple prints with different settings, or have different settings throughout your print. Um, things you can't do in MakerBot, but it also means there's a lot of settings all at once. It also has to do with the fact that um, all the settings that define your printer are lumped into these settings box. So some of it you'll never need to touch, but for the meantime, it's a little bit intimidating. Um, but I'll just go through to how to find the things that you're used to from MakerBot, and hopefully you won't have a huge problem. First thing you do need to do, though, is to make sure that you're on the right profile. I believe the default profile for the printer that I'm showing off is the MakerBot Replicator 2, and that's called MakerBot Replicator 2. So you can save preset profiles, which correspond to either different types of printers, or um, different printers, or different ways of printing, different materials and such. And those will be in this profile view up here. Um, so I'm going to go find the MakerBot Replicator 2 profile, which I created um, instead of the default one, and click on that. It'll ask me if I want to save my old one, and I'll say no. And press OK, and you'll see it'll slowly resize the build plate to the proper size of my MakerBot Replicator 2. Um, you know how to do that in MakerBot, most likely, so I won't show you how to do that. Then, so now that I have all the preset settings, like the size and the number of steps per millimeter on my motor properly set up, I can go to the settings that you're used to dealing with with MakerBot. Um, so, for example, if I'm printing in PLA, I can tell it the resolution I want here. Those exist on Simplify 3D. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You'll have to mess around with them. As of right now, there's no easy way to modify these preset settings. Uh, hopefully, in the future, there will be. So, there's not really too much worth going over for those. Um, 
As far as raft settings, you've got that button right here in Simplify, and same with supports right here. There's also settings tabs for those under supports and additions where rafts are uh, that give you a lot more control over those, but I'll go over those in a different video. Let's keep going quickly. Um, infill settings are also very accessible in Simplify 3D. You've got them right here with this infill percentage, and more settings are under the infill tab, uh, which is the interior fill percentage corresponds to that uh, slider. You can see it goes up and down when I move that. Um, one thing you should note though is that Simplify 3D does not support hexagonal infill. It only uses um, linear or diagonal, meaning that you won't be able to use the normal hexa hexagons on the inside of your print. Um, the jury is still kind of out on which is stronger or the benefits of the, of the two, but uh, it's just worth noting. Um, latest I've seen is that um, either linear or diagonal infill is a little bit stronger than hexagonal. It's not a huge difference, so you may need to use slightly less infill. I usually do 10 to 15 per percent, but that's not super important right now. Number of shells, if you know where that, if you're used to that from MakerBot, is actually under layer tab here, and that's outline and perimeter shells right here. Usually I print with two. As far as layer height, that's also under the here under the layer tab. Um, primary layer height here, point point two is my default also similar to MakerBot settings. Under temperature, uh, you'll go to the temperature tab right here, and you can see that there will be slots for multiple extruders or heated build plates here. Um, you'll just click on one and set uh, settings for each one. And you can see the settings are down here, so you set after for layer one and every layer after that, set the temperature to whatever I have here. You can have a change during later in the print, but again, I'll go over more specifics with that. But right now, if this is set at 230, which it is, then you should have no problem. As far as speed, speed while extruding and speed while traveling are actually both under the other tab here in the setting in the process settings. Default printing speed is speed while extruding, so 90 millimeters per second, and speed while traveling is actually the x y mo axis movement speed down here. Um, again, a lot more to mess with here, but I'll go over in a different video. Um, so then you just say save settings and press OK here. And you're all ready to go. So to slice, remember in MakerBot, you press either print and it'll do it, but I'm used to using an SD card, so export to print file, and it'll slice right here. It's actually much longer in, in MakerBot than Simplify 3D. Simplify 3D, you just go here to prepare to print, and it will slice already done, even though I did that a couple seconds after the MakerBot one. So even though MakerBot's been speeding up recently, it's still much slower than Simplify, especially for complicated parts. Um, I didn't include supports, because this is just a show, but uh, obviously normally you would need supports for all of the legs of this little guy. Um, as you know in MakerBot, you do print preview to take a look at your print, and you can see how oh, I actually did supp do supports in MakerBot. Um, again, right click to, to rotate, middle mouse to pan, um, to see around your toolpath visualization, your material use are up here, and print time is over also over here. In Simplify 3D, all of that is already here, so if I zoom in, um, that's already apparent right there. Uh, you've got, sorry if this buzzing is annoying, there's a print finishing in the background. Um, but you can see the speed is up here, uh, sometimes correct, sometimes not. There's a slight discrepancy because there's no supports in the Simplify one. Uh, filament length used, the weight, and the cost if you input the price of your uh, filament. Uh, but that's all right there. Again, the panning and, and orbiting is the same as usual. And you can see those toolpath visualizations. The color in Simplify has to do with the speed. Um, for smaller layers, it will try to slow down to make sure that you don't go too quickly through them and have the film that not have enough time to cool down. Um, this is a setting you can mess with later. Uh, to see throughout your print, you go down here and it'll show you layer by layer, just like in MakerBot, where if you go layer down here, and you can see the slice. And of course, you can see this infill is slightly different in each one, um, but that's just something you'll have to play with. To show travel moves, if that's something you like, uh, show in preview on this side is show travel moves right here. Um, when you're finished looking at this, you've decided you have a good print and all things like that, you just say save toolpath to disk and save it exactly where you want as G-code. It's worth mentioning though that of course uh, MakerBot printers, the old ones, like to use uh, only take X3G files. Simplify 3D has no problem with that, but when you're saving a file from Simplify 3D and you save it over another file, um, it will save both the G-code and the X3G file. It's 
worth noting though of course that if you save it over the G code it will only override the G code and not the X3G file I mean if you don't change the name you'll actually still be printing the same X3G file and so you'll fail again if you've already had a problem with the first one uh, so just make sure you always rename those it's also worth noting especially if you're used to using MakerBot printers is if you go to tools here and um, not manually defined supports, but firmware configuration. You need to make sure that when you're printing on a MakerBot, you have the correct firmware selected, because the commands are slightly different for MakerBot printers versus other ones. So you go here and make sure instead of saying RepRap, it'll say MakerBot or Sailfish software. Make sure that's selected correctly, and also go to the X3G tab right here, and make sure your particular printer is selected from this list, or else you'll get a missized part. Not a huge deal, unless you're doing something mechanically accurate, but if you need things to fit together properly, and you do them on different printers, then the MakerBot printers will do them wrong. Um, but you can see all of those options are right here. Uh, usually when I'm done with that, I will just re-slice by hitting return and prepare to print again. And because it's so quick at doing that, it's not a huge deal. So that's basically all you need to do for a quick swap of all of the information you're used to from MakerBot. Of course, there's a lot more, and I'll go over that in a, a complete walkthrough of how all the settings you should be looking at whenever you import a new file to print. Uh, but that'll be on a different video. This is just a quick overview. So I hope you liked that, and I hope it was useful. And if you need more information, feel free to contact me, Simplify3D Support, who are amazing, um, or look for my other videos that might help you. Awesome. Thanks. Bye-bye.